for me putting people first means understanding the barriers and trying to address those barriers uh like uh, the vulnerable and marginalized people are often left out from the services what i understand is that we need to de decentralize further and further stigma reduction is the thing which i understand as put people first one of the good news from india uh, that i am sharing is that the one hp regimen which is a shorter regimen for uh, tb preventive treatment uh, is about to be rolled out i just confirmed with our uh, national team and uh, they told me yes it's uh, on so we have the supplies in space the in place the guidelines are there and i think shortly uh, instead of a six months uh, tb preventive treatment for plhiv will be having a one month uh, uh, tb preventive treatment so that is going to be a very very big game change uh, the 4s verbal symptom screening is not sufficient but right now i re rejected with our team uh, they are doing only the 4s verbal symptom screening and anybody who has any symptom we do upfront uh, nat testing nucleic acid uh, testing so anybody having any symptoms we do nucleic acid testing but uh, we are still not transitioned into that uh, doing point of care handheld x rays and that's a big gap which we are trying to uh, like address uh, even for tb we are looking for csr support to get those machines uh, point of care handheld x rays because they are not yet provided by the program so uh, that is definitely the next next frontier because the national tb uh, prevalence survey in, of india shows that having a chest x ray picks up a lot of early uh, people and we have our experience uh, in a jail setting where uh, people did not have any symptoms and in communicate in collaboration with the tibetan government we uh, they have a, a handheld portable x ray so uh, they they and the rotary people and we uh, jointly did a screening camp in the jail the district prison and uh, we got a yield of 88 out of 400 prisoners so such a high yield of presumptives so uh, definitely this is the new frontier like having a point of care mole uh, this uh, uh, molecular test as well as point of care uh, handheld ultra portable x-rays and uh, i think we need to scale up into this the most expensive tests which lead to the out of pocket expenditure is the ct scan and the mri scan so the government of himachal pradesh has made both these tests free these tests are not covered under the free diagnostic scheme of government of india so uh, these tests are free under the state government scheme which is called the mukhya mantri uh, yojana for tb and uh, in case somebody's already spent the money we'll reimburse the money to the patient despite the decline in tb we have not been able to decline the deaths as we wanted for the ntb goals the tb deaths is a trace indicator of the uh, health system how strong our primary health care is how strong our secondary health care is so if a, we can't save a person with tb then definitely there's a lot to do on the primary health care a lot to do on the secondary health care so we need to work on that also uh, these are multi disease platforms and uh, you just need to change the chip or the cartridge and do the any disease testing and i think more than 100 diseases we uh, are, uh, we can test from these platforms uh, and some initiatives have already been done like we have an area which is having a high hep b hep c so we are using the same TrueNet machine which is there for TB for our Hep B and Hep C viral load. So uh, we just needed to procure those chips and uh, provide them. And people were able to get those tests done near to their homes rather than traveling 40 uh, kilometers away. And just imagine a person who is an intravenous drug user getting him to travel 40 kilometers away for a test. It's very, very difficult. So. Uh, we are trying to integrate to a small small scale but definitely integration needs to happen at a much bigger uh, scale uh, when there was a peak of the covid i used to say that there are two slots in the machine 
program one for TB, one slot for TB, and one slot slot for COVID. So we need to balance. We needed to balance out both the requirements that COVID testing is also necessary and TB TB testing is also necessary. These point of care platforms, uh, like uh, what I understand is that uh, the CBNet, uh, the running cost is more. The AMC cost is more. The TrueNet, the running cost is less. The AMC cost is less, and uh, the only difference is the HR that the CBNet you fill and forget, and with the true net you need some uh, LT needs to be there to continuously process the whole thing. So uh, both have their own advantages and disadvantages. But uh, like uh, we need to have more and more net machines uh, in every district. Like in my district, I have at least one net machine in every every health block. Hello, welcome, friends. Today uh, this is a very special episode of Put People First series. Uh, in the lead up to the 25th International AIDS Conference, which is the largest AIDS conference in the world uh, for this year, um, also referred to as AIDS 2024. So let us talk to someone who, uh, you know, who has been a big inspiration for, for me personally. Uh, and especially I'm saying this because uh, um, if a uh, doctor, uh, doctor, please correct, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it is at least 20, 20 plus years ago when we were moderating uh, Asia Pacific uh, uh, e-forum, electronic discussion forum on HIV AIDS and uh, the global Stop TB forum, which was founded in the for a lead up to Stop TB partnership, Dr. R. K. Sood was a name familiar to all of us. Dr. R. K. Sood from Kangra, Himachal Pradesh, he has been one of the most vocal persons for uh, people's rights, people's health, especially connecting the dots between uh, not only tubo uh, tuberculosis and HIV, but also a lot of other issues like NCDs, nutrition, water. When I went to, you know, I was very lucky to meet him in person a few times. And one of, um, it was very, it's a great coincidence, sir, to, uh, to happen to meet you in Kangra. And I remember you were mobilizing local support so that when patients and people come to access you know, TB services, they have uh, clean, portable drinking water, for example, with support from local communities and so many other little things. He has uh, be played a very key role in shaping Kangra's uh, health responses. Right now, he's working as District Program Officer of National Health Mission in Kangra, Himachal Pradesh, India. My personal conviction is that probably Himachal Pradesh, Kangra will be among, probably among the very first few who will be, you know, touching the NTB uh, goalpost. And we, we really pray that his efforts be a fruit. Welcome, Dr. Saab. Uh, thank you, Bobby Ramakant, for uh, having me on the show. And uh, it's a real pleasure to be in touch with the global community through uh, your uh, esteemed platform. And I think uh, uh, CNS News is doing a wonderful job of uh, taking these issues forward and the debate for having a better accountable services. So I think uh, it's a really uh, nice to be here in your show. Thank you so much, Dr. Sood. We are very, so, very small team, but we at uh, in my heart, I really feel that we are part of your team too. So Dr. Sood, you have really played uh, on the front lines. You have played a very important role. Uh, I think everyone who is uh, working in health will probably be familiar with your name and they will probably associate you with TB. But uh, I know that you have played a role in HIV and other spheres as well. So a person who has seen TB, people with HIV, HIV responses, NCD responses, other issues which are connected to health like water and others. So how, so your opening remarks, sir, like how in terms of TB, HIV co-infection, in terms of ending TB and ending AIDS, your opening remarks. Uh, one of the good things that's been happening since 2018 is uh, we are offering TB preventive treatment to all the uh, people living with HIV, screening all of them. Initially, the uh, coverage was low, but with time and efforts, we have been able to scale it, scale it up to nearly 100%. And it's a very good team effort from our ART center, our uh, ground staff who are understanding this. Uh, initially, we used to have uh, coordination meetings between the ICTC and the TB staff at a district level. But when we found that the district level is too big for exchanging line lists, so we decentralized it to the ICTC and the TU level. 
so they used to meet their exchange line dates have their minutes of meeting and individual patients could be tracked in those meetings so uh what i understand is that we need to de decentralize further and further like in the national health mission now we have the health wellness centers which are now called ayushman arogya mandir in india so the community health officer is the lowest uh, like doorstep uh, facility so they are giving the tb services though hiv services are not yet decentralized to this level but uh, the further we build the capacity uh, the greater the stigma reduction will be there so stigma reduction is the thing which i understand as put people first uh, like for tb we did a uh, this thing uh, engagement with the, the community health officers and the community health officers are now very comfortable on providing the tb services so i think one of the good things could be to uh, train the community health officers on hiv also like one initiative we took last year was uh, capacity building of the community health officers on the hiv aids act of india so this hiv aids act protects the rights of the communities and uh, uh the chos initially and even our health professional initially took it as like this a very anti health professional act lot of penalties lot of uh, things against us so then we again explained it to them that why protection of rights is very important in the hiv response so this approach uh, changing mindsets of our healthcare teams is i think one of the first things we need to uh take forward to improve the services make them client friendly and make them more accessible and uh, recently we are having a very good campaign in india which is a integrated campaign for hiv sti hepatitis uh, blood uh, blood pressure di diabetes and uh, anemia so having such integrated campaigns will remove the stigma from the testing because otherwise uh, if a camp is labeled as a hiv testing camp there is a stigma attributed to that and uh, when we have it as a comprehensive health checkup camp i think uh, more people can access those services without any fear or uh, being labeled as uh, uh, like uh, immoral or uh, like uh, uh, having any shame associated with that so this is one of the good things that that's uh, going forward and one of the good news from india uh, that i am sharing is that the one hp regimen which is a shorter regimen for uh, tb preventive treatment uh, is about to be rolled out i just confirmed with our uh, national team and uh, they told me yes it's uh, on so we have the supplies in space the in place the guidelines are there and i think shortly uh instead of a 6 months uh, tb preventive treatment for plhiv will be having a one month uh, uh tb preventive treatment so that is going to be a very very big game changer so uh, as a very big uh, like uh, step from the indian government in putting people first so lot of good things going on uh though everything is not so rosy we have had uh, medicine stock outs in india net cartridges stock out in india but now those things are beyond the shelf now we have, we are over it and now like supply chains have restored so like uh, we are like on the fast track towards ending tb hiv and achieving the sdg goals in the unlgm so uh, like uh, very very optimistic and lot of things have been done but many more are yet to be done i think uh, and it's a uh, continued learning which i would say that uh, we are always learning day by day with our experiences with the experiences of our team so that's uh, the way like we move forward we work we learn from our mistakes then we improve it further so i think uh, that's the way we are trying to uh, accelerate our efforts towards uh, ending tb hiv and ncd so um uh, one of the like uh, very optimistic news that uh, i would like to uh, share through you with everybody sir congratulations you know again you are leading from the front 
one HP is such an important regimen, especially because it's shorter. I think, sir, it is rifapentine and isoniazid for for yes. a month, right? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Imagine of oh, the difference it will make. It love, you know. Uh, we'll come back to that. But this is really uh, game game changing, and especially path path setting because you will be now. I hope that other other districts and cities and states follow this, and this really becomes a reality for everyone. One month regimen for preventing uh, tuberculosis transmission, latent TB to active disease. So thank you so much, Doctor Sooth, for to help us understand. Can you please let us know? How do we find TB among people living with HIV? How do we screen them? Are we screening them with X-rays and testing them on molecular tests? Um, or are we screening them just verbally asking for symptoms? Because, sir, as you know, the India TB prevalence survey report of the government, in I think it is 2019 to 2021, uh, it probably showed that how over half of the patients were asymptomatic. So if we need to re catch them early, if we need to find them early, I should not use the word catch, but uh, you, we need to find them early. Yeah. Uh, if we if we can find them early, probably we need to really use uh, tools like X-rays. So can you just give us a sense how uh, people living, how do we look for TB in people living with HIV in program setting? Yes, sir. Uh, well, TB is the one biggest comorbidity in the PLHIV. And uh, you're totally right that uh, the 4S verbal symptom screening is not sufficient. But right now, I rechecked re with our team. Uh, they are doing only the 4S verbal symptom screening. And anybody who has any symptom, we do upfront uh, NAT testing, nucleic acid uh, testing. So anybody having any symptoms, we do nucleic acid testing. But uh, we are still not transitioned into that uh, doing point of care handheld x-rays and that's a big gap which we are trying to uh, like address. Uh, even for TB, we are looking for CSR support to get those machines, uh, point of care, handheld x-rays because they are not yet provided by the program. So uh, that is definitely the next, next frontier because the National TB uh, Prevalence Survey in, of India shows that having a chest x-ray picks up a lot of early uh, people and we have our experience uh, in a jail setting where uh, people did not have any symptoms and in communicate in collaboration with the Tibetan government, we uh, they have a, a handheld portable X-ray. So uh, they they and the Rotary people and we uh, jointly did a screening camp in the jail, the district prison, and uh, we got a yield of eighty eight out of four hundred prisoners. So such a high yield of presumptives. So uh, definitely this is the new frontier, like having a point of care, uh, this uh, uh, molecular test, as well as point of care, uh, handheld ultra portable x-rays. And uh, I think we need to scale up into this. Yes, you are. You're so right. Let us hope that this becomes a reality soon, sir. We really need to scale up uh, the, the deployment of point of care tools. As uh, Dr. Luchika Dithyu, of Stop TB Partnership, she said uh, uh, some months back, I think, in one of the sessions, that um, by by taking services to the people, closer to the people, we remove many barriers which people may be facing in accessing those services. So it could right. be uh, difficult to reach areas. It could be social economic. It could be a range of other barriers. So we and now we now science has gifted us uh, tools which are battery operated, lab independent, they can be really go be deployed at the close, uh, closer to the communities, literally at their doorstep, even artificial intelligence and made in India, even which is so, so better. Uh, so, so really, uh, really hope that what you just said, uh, really translates into action on the ground. Uh, Dr. Sood, you have, uh, can you please help us all understand um, what about extrapulmonary TB among people living with HIV? Uh, well, extrapulmonary TB has always remained a challenge and uh, uh, we need better tools to diagnose them, evaluate them. And uh, often uh, people will need to go to medical colleges for the uh, diagnosis. So, what happens in our setting is that ART Central is in the medical college. So if somebody has a lymph node, then the surgery department will take the FNAC and then will subject the FNAC sample to uh, this uh, CBNAT. But uh, it's not so simple. Lymph nodes is the easiest to access. But abdominal TB and other TB, extrapulmonary TB, 
is quite quite difficult to diagnose and often there is a delay in diagnosis so constitutional symptoms other supportive tests help us suspect that there's something wrong and uh, maybe the condition of the patient uh, deteriorates and then we try to suspect so still like uh, extra pulmonary tb is a challenge uh, recently the indian government uh, uh, the aims and a very very big committee uh, updated the guidelines for extra pulmonary tb diagnosis so extra pulmonary tb uh, has always been a bone of contention and uh, like no consensus was there earlier on how long to treat how to diagnose so the new guidelines we did a series of cme on extra pulmonary tb with all the nodal officers in all the health institutions so uh, we expect that there will be some improvement in the early detection of extra pulmonary tb and one of the good things that i can tell you from here uh, the most expensive tests which lead to the out of pocket expenditure is the ct scan and the mri scan so the government of himachal pradesh has made both these tests free these tests are not covered under the free diagnostic scheme of government of india so uh, these tests are free under the state government scheme which is called the mukhya mantri uh, yojana for tb and uh, in case somebody has already spent the money we'll reimburse the money to the patient so that's how it operates so we are trying to decrease the out of pocket expenditure because extra pulmonary tb leads to a lot of out of pocket expenditure the person person has to travel a lot far away from his home and uh, though we are not able to reimburse that travel expenses but well at least the uh, diagnostic expenses we are able to reimburse yes oh, thank you so much this is very important that you mentioned about the uh, you know the coverage of uh, ct scan and mri one of the two big uh, uh, out of pocket expenses otherwise uh, uh, for for people and it is so great that the himachal pradesh government uh, you know covers for these two services for those in need uh, very very important as the doctor sood as you um, i remember you emphasized last year also when we spoke that diagnostic delays are uh, we really need to reduce diagnostic delays uh, because diagnostic delays not only lead to unnecessary human suffering but it also uh, spread uh, you know the infection keeps spreading and i remember your powerful words dr sood so please allow me to uh, to try to quote you but um, uh, i could be a word word here or there you said that every tb death is a grim reminder that we could have done better in terms of preventing the disease in terms of early diagnosis in terms of taking care better it was such a humbling moment to read and to listen to those words sir and i really hope that uh, you know tb responses are able to eliminate diagnostic delays a recent study found that over half of the people who face diagnostic delays in india they face it before getting diagnosed so yeah. um, which is really you know th this kind of catastrophe because diagnostic delay is not only diagnostic delay it comes often it comes with catastrophic cost and uh, it's good that the government of himachal pradesh is covering for uh, some important tests which are very very expensive like mri and ct scan but we really need to eliminate diagnostic delays so doc dr sood let us come to the prevention as you uh, have already probably said a uh, few uh, eliminate, uh, highlighted few things we can do to prevent tb you spoke about the shortest and the best possible tb preventive therapy regimen 1 hp rifapentine and isoniazid just one month therapy and people with latent tb will have probably very no no risk to get, convert into active disease treat tb treatment is prevention sir so please correct me if, if i am wrong if a person with tb is treated with effective medicines the infection stops uh, spreading from that person is it true in infectious diseases early detection and prompt treatment and uh, further the early detection and treatment of latent tb is life saving it's a very very uh, like uh, uh, good thing and uh, beyond the plhiv we are also implementing the tb preventive treatment for the general adult population also and we are getting very very good results and the tolerance is very good the adverse drug reactions are less than 1% and uh, like it's very acceptable like uh, earlier people used to come to us and ask that and the family members of the patient would ask that if this person has tb now what do we do so earlier we could just tell 
cross ventilation, good nutrition, take care of this man, and uh, if he takes proper diet and uh, proper medicine, then uh, it will be good. So now we have next thing to offer that, okay, you all may be having latent TB, so get yourself tested and uh, if you, uh, this thing, and the next thing that's coming up in India is Psy TB. Psy TB is a very revolutionary test, which uh, uh, I understand that uh, the there will be no interference of BCG and uh, the results are as good as IGRA with a very high cost effectiveness. And I think that's also around the corner. I think uh, maybe in another one month, uh, it will be available uh, throughout the country. So uh, we'll be able to diagnose earlier, put them on treatment. We have sufficient stocks of uh, 3HP. So that's one of the another good things. Uh, when the 3HP was rolled out in India, it was imported by WHO. And uh, now India has a sufficient manufacturing uh, capacity, sufficient procurement. So these are all very, very positive vibes, which I see for prevention. Uh, another thing in prevention is like the adult BCG revaccination thing has started in India. Uh, some limited states have started it right now. Some will do it after this uh, elections have uh, like uh, done. So my experience from Kangra is that 25% um, of the population was broadly eligible. Among those who were eligible, one fourth gave their consent. And uh, I've been like our team in Kangra, we have been able to vaccinate around 98,000 uh, uh, people who were eligible. And uh, now it's in the last stages that anybody who's left out or uh, wants to get the vaccine. So uh, very, very good uh, acceptance of the vaccine, a new vaccine, uh, and keeping in view like the, uh, the whole narrative that was built around the COVID vaccine. So uh, people still trust that it's the old vaccine, a safe vaccine. So uh, I think prevention is the game changer. We have reached a plateau uh, with the... Himachal has a very high presumptive TB examination rate. We are testing around 3,500 people per lakh population, which is uh, one of the highest uh, in India. So despite all this testing, we are not finding more cases. So to further decline the uh, TB trajectory, we need to work actively and more, pro uh, like more uh, aggressively on prevention. So right now, like PLHIV and children were the traditional uh, population whom were eligible for TB preventive treatment. But uh, uh, later people, uh, adult contacts were added and then some more key populations were added. But we are looking forward to a further scale up in the populations who will be offered TB preventive treatment, maybe healthcare providers. Uh, I think there are people at risk. So we are looking forward that Government of India will scale up those directions and we get more people eligible for TB preventive treatment. Uh, I, as a healthcare provider, would like to take it first whenever it's available because I don't know whether it will be a latent MDR or a latent uh, this thing, but uh, maybe uh, I can like uh, have a treatment at a time when I can tolerate the medicines and rather than a time when. Uh, I can't tolerate the medicine, so many of uh, drugs to be taken and immunity already down. So I think TB preventive treatment is definitely a very, very big lifesaver as well as a very, very big game changer uh, in the whole game, I think. And uh, we need to have a big trust on that. Very, very important point. We have spoken about TPT with so many people, but this is the first time I'm hearing and such an such so convincing what you said. It is way better to take TPT than, uh, you know, go through the disease and uh, you know, um, deal with toxicities and medications. And uh, when the immunity is already low and, uh, and uh, you know, there is no need for anyone to go develop active TB disease when TPT yeah. is available. So you are very right that the TB bug, which is latent in my body or anyone's body, could be drug sensitive, could be drug resistant. It is way better to take um, uh, adhere to one month therapy 
and uh, of, of probably eliminate the risk of any active disease. So thank you so much for saying that so important. Dr. Sood, you, you, given your experience, we would like to hear one more thing from you. Uh, nutrition is a very big risk, malnutrition is a very big risk factor for TB, biggest in India. Uh, there are other risk factors like tobacco, alcohol, uh, diabetes, HIV is of course one of them. So there is a lot more I think people like uh, me and everyone can do to reduce our risk of uh, not only getting latent TB, but also converting from latent to active disease. Uh, well, one of the good things that happened recently was uh, initiating a, a new initiative, which is the differentiated TB care management. Uh, Tamil Nadu did the research, the piloting, and uh, we adopted that uh, uh, with the like uh, on a bigger scale and every patient who's diagnosed as TB, we do a risk assessment with around 16 parameters. The risk scoring sheet is stapled with the treatment card and anybody who has a risk, he should not go home. He should be admitted in the hospital. He's admitted in the hospital for five days. We have earmarked beds for them and we have trained our doctors and in case he gets sick, Again, he needs to come back. And in case I get any call from any uh, person with TB or his family members saying that the patient is sick and please send us the medicines home, uh, my message is the patient is sick. Please bring him to the hospital. He doesn't need to be at home. It is for his uh, safety that you need to bring him to the hospital. So one of the good initiatives we are having is uh, this differentiated TB care. We are, we are screening trying to manage the comorbidities. And in addition, there is a scheme called Nikshe Poshan Yojana, uh, which uh, initially it receives a very good uh, response is the world's biggest crowdfunding initiative that somebody adopts a person with TB, provides nutrition support as well as psychosocial support. So initially I had a, a coverage of around 90% among the people who were consented. Somebody is adopting them and this also contributed to decreasing the stigma. Right now, it's around 25%. People have lost some interest. Uh, maybe people were busy with the elections also. So we are trying to again scale up this Nikshe Potion Yojana scheme uh, where and encourage people to come forward and help fellow citizens having TB. So that also is uh, going to be a very, very big game changer, not just in nutrition. It's the psychosocial support the person feels some confidence so that he can adhere to his medicines. A, a person who is himself into depression, subclinical depression or clinical depression, he won't be able to take medicines regularly. He won't be able to complete his treatment. So management of comorbidities, including mental health, is a very, very big area for saving lives. See, I uh, openly admit that Despite the decline in TB, we have not been able to decline the deaths as we wanted for the NTB goals. We have been able to decline uh, incidence by 50%, which was the midline of the SDG uh, goals, NTB goals. But deaths, we just, uh, after the this uh, differential TB, TB care, we've got a marginal decline. So we've got to work a lot on saving lives. Only then... My statement that TB is curable will ha hold credibility. Right now, we say TB is curable, but people are dying of comorbidities. People are dying of many other issues. Even COVID, nobody actually died of COVID officially. Everybody died of comorbidities. So we need to manage the comorbidities in a much better way and uh, not only build the capacities of our team, uh, strengthen the health systems and uh the this thing the health the deaths the tb deaths is a trace indicator of the uh health system how strong our primary health care is how strong our secondary health care is so if a, we can't save a person with tb then definitely there's a lot to do on the primary health care a lot to do on the secondary health care so we need to work on that also uh, TB and AIDS can't be ended in isolation. It's a whole gamut of efforts, I think. Uh, and um, 
that's what uh, right now what is uh, you are advocating and everybody is advocating that we need to integrate the services so i think integration holds the key uh, like uh, i told in the initial part of my uh, uh, talk today that the government of india is having a integrated campaign for hiv tb sti blood pressure uh, diabetes anemia so i think that's something which is going to take off the stigma and get more and more people to know their status if people know their hiv status definitely it makes a lot of uh, dent in the transmission and it makes a lot of uh, like a uh, uh, big game changer uh, uh, in towards the ending uh, tb and hiv goals oh, and thanks a lot for reminding us again because we this becomes a cliche statement that tb is preventable and curable because it is not for uh, almost 10.6 million people who got tb last year or about 13 lakh people who lost their lives it is very important reminder uh, dr sood about the integrated health and development it is so true we can't end um, uh, pick one goal and ignore other uh, health and development indices it is so true let us hope uh, you know your words really uh, uh, change things, and uh, this is exactly what needs to happen. What you have just said. Uh, if I know uh, you are any, you are a busy person, and you are doing such important work, sir. Thanks a lot for taking your time. But before we let you go, we need to ask few more things. These machines, whether it is uh, CBNet or TrueNet, these can be deployed to test for a range of conditions. So, uh, advantage with TrueNet, it is point of care, battery operated, lab independent, can go in the field. Uh, so, uh, like STIs, for example, HIV, viral load testing, malaria, dengue, chikungunya. In Kerala, it was deployed to test for Nipah virus. But what I failed to understand is why are we not deploying these machines uh, for to for multi disease testing? A same person who may be coming, uh, 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 you know, depending upon the area. Maybe some area, for example, are high in drug use. So, what about hepatitis, HIV, TB? Uh, I'm just imagining as a non-medical person, why, why, if if I have three diseases or if I'm at risk of three diseases, why not? For example, if I have HIV, do my HIV viral load testing, do my TB testing also uh, when I go to uh, collect my medicines at three months. Doctor Sood, um, Doctor Sangeeta Sharma is a known person in Delhi. Uh, she uh, she uh, was a strong advocate for preventing antimicrobial uh, resistance. Yes, yes, yes. And she is saying, unless we have the best of diagnostics at the grassroots, how will we ensure that the healthcare providers are using uh, medicines justly, exactly, yeah. you know, uh, uh, un unless we have those tools and technologies in place at, uh, at all levels, how will we ensure people use medicines uh, uh, properly, rationally, reasonably, and AMR uh, is not filled? Uh, so Bobby, really very, very well taken point, I think. Uh, these are multi-disease platforms and uh, you just need to change the chip or the cartridge and do the any disease testing. And I think more than 100 diseases we uh, are, uh, we can test from these platforms. Uh, and some initiatives have already been done. Like we have an area which is having a high hep V hep C. So we are using the same TrueNet machine which is there for TB for our hep V and hep C viral load. So uh, we just needed to procure those chips and uh, provide them. And people were able to get those tests done near to their homes rather than traveling 40 uh, kilometers away. And just imagine a person who's an intravenous drug user, getting him to travel 40 kilometers away for a test. It's very, very difficult. So uh, we are trying to integrate to a small, small scale. But definitely integration needs to happen at a much bigger uh, scale. Uh, when there was a peak of the COVID, I used to say that there are two slots in the machine, program one for TB, one slot for TB and one slot, slot for COVID. So we need to balance, we needed to balance out both the requirements that COVID testing is also necessary and TB, TB testing is also necessary. So it was the same machine, though my staff was skeptical that how oh, the same machine, so COVID testing, we need to have so many precautions. So uh, like initially with the initial resistance, they were able to uh, uh, overcome it. So uh, like uh, definitely it is possible. And uh, these point of care platforms, uh, like uh, what I understand is that uh, the CBNet 
uh, the running cost is more, the AMC cost is more, the true net, the running cost is less, the AMC cost is less. And uh, the only difference is the HR, that the CV net you fill and forget. And with the true net, you need some uh, LT needs to be there to continuously process the whole thing. So uh, both have their own advantages and disadvantages. But uh, like uh, we need to have more and more NAT machines uh, in every district. Like in my district, I have at least one NAT machine in every, every health block. So uh, some we got through CSR, some we got through TB division, some we got through the COVID funding. So through multiple sources, we are able to uh, try to uh, get more and more uh, testing facilities. I would like this to be scaled up even further. Like some remote areas where uh, sample transportation is actually a challenge. So I uh, maybe uh, I would like to have more machines and I'm looking forward uh, to uh, getting support from some more people. So uh, getting these point of care tests I think uh, is a very, very good business proposition also for private labs because uh, I can tell you like one lab in my district had a true net machine and they earned a lot from that true net machine doing the COVID testing. So uh, it definitely makes sense to have these molecular point of test uh, uh, care testing in the private sector also. Anyway, thanks a lot for letting us know that that what we are imagining is already happening in Kangra. Thank you again for leading from the front. Please let us know what put people first means to you. For me, putting people first means understanding the barriers and trying to address those barriers. Uh, like uh, the vulnerable and marginalized people are often left out from the services. I often talk to my community health officers that ha has any LGBTQI plus community uh, member actually come to you for services and the answer I get is no. So we en engage with the Himachal Cure Foundation uh, they came to our meetings, they sensitized our people. So uh, getting people out of judgmental attitude, the, I mean, the service providers out of the judgmental attitudes, uh, getting our uh, services to be friendlier towards the community is one of the steps. But uh, definitely there are a lot of perspectives, uh, uh, the felt need of the community, uh, we need to understand uh, we had a lot of drug shortages and despite that we were able to manage somehow. But uh, definitely it's a very, very big challenge to put people's needs first. Because for the service provider, it's statistics that how many people I've given Nikshe Poshan Yojana, how many people have got this service, how many people have not got this service. So reporting goes into numbers. So if uh, service providers understand Humans rather than numbers, I think that is uh, putting people first. And uh, uh, this thing is very important that we try to put have empathy, put ourselves in the shoes of the person who's uh, sitting on the other side. So that makes our service more human, more uh, like uh, uh, friendly and more acceptable. And I think one of the best indicators uh, of the quality of TB care would be that how many of the TB patients were actually satisfied with the TB services and then they want to become TB champions. Right now, it's very difficult to find TB champions because maybe their experience has not been good enough or maybe the stigma is very high. But when we'll be actually putting people first, maybe we'll be having everybody willing to become a TB champion, everybody becoming uh, willing to become a HIV champion. So. That is something I think uh, it's a futuristic thing, a very uh, distant dream, but let us try to aspirate for it and let's try to uh, work towards it. I uh, actually try to learn from the people, from my team, my, my staff, then uh, you. Uh, I think uh, the biggest thing is that my staff gives me the better, better ideas than me. So I trust my team. They, they tell me what, what's wrong with this approach, what is better. And uh, like I hold uh, meetings with my team. So 
I get a lot of ideas, a lot of cross learnings. And I think this is the whole strength that everybody learns from each other. And uh, we give the right person the right responsibility. And that makes a real difference, I think. Everybody has different skills, different strengths. And whatever the strengths are, become the strengths of the team, I think. That really matters. And listening to uh, everybody in the team and actually trying to work step by step and measure your work, I think uh, that makes a lot of difference. Uh, in Himachal, we have a very good work culture. So that also makes a lot of difference. Very good accountability. People really uh, are very, very positive. Uh, one of the successes I can tell you is that uh, youth engagement in TB and HIV has been very, very exemplary. Uh, like uh, the youth are very, very talented. They create reels on social media. They create uh, different types of creatives, uh, candlelight, uh, face painting, a stone painting, which conveys the message much more powerfully than any government official could convey. So I think those are new allies that we are taking. And very recently, we have started working with self-help groups. These are small uh, women groups in the community who are working primarily on microfinance. What common area we want to do is address stigma. If we are able to address myths and misconceptions among the self-help groups, maybe we'll be able to address stigma, maybe we'll be able to create a more open environment. So I think uh, more and more people engage, we engage with, uh, I think uh, the bigger our reach can be. And that's what the public health has taught us that uh, have more and more partners, more and more uh, people, uh, talk to more people. Communication is a very, very big thing, uh, which I've learned. Uh, I think health systems have traditionally neglected communication. Communication professionals uh, are need of the R. And I think if we have communication professionals in our team, it definitely strengthens our team. So these are some things I think which can further take us the next step forward. But the basics will remain and we we'll have to uh, like work on more things. And like you said, putting people first, a new mindset, uh, open mindset among the health system and uh, a dedication among our team. So that's really, really uh, very important. Motivating our teams is very, very important, I think. That makes a lot of difference in uh, how we like uh, between good people and outstanding teams. So I think uh, it's a very, very positive vibes. I think I'll conclude with the uh, positive vibes again. One HP we are going to offer and we are offering uh, adult BCG vaccination. So a uh, lot of good things are happening. Differentiated TB care is happening. We just need to strengthen these things further and further to improve the outcomes and improve the penetration and uh, more communication to address stigma, more communication to uh, have these uh, people engaged with this uh, uh, campaigns. It's a community driven campaign rather than a government driven campaign. So those things will further strengthen our uh, uh, this thing. Uh, uh, efforts towards the ending TB and HIV SDGs. So I think uh, Definitely, it's a long way ahead. Uh, I don't see it happening in 25, but maybe by 2030, we'll be able to definitely achieve these milestones. So much for, you know, for sharing so, so important insights and reflections based upon your decades of work, uh, Dr. Sood. So it's really important to see these, uh, not only uh, how we can improve the TB response so that every TB person who goes through the care of uh, turns into a TB survivor, a uh, champion, and uh, becomes an ally of the program. Uh, and you are so right. Uh, the the response from those who get cured um, is uh, uh, in the in the feedback. If they if we can if the, if, the, if as as you say and many others uh, have said that that we need to listen to the people we serve. And if those people and those input can help uh, improve the services from patient point of view, from user point of view. 
uh, like we all expect great services when we call customer care of anything. So if we can really um, make uh, TV services people friendly, rights based, um, um, you know, and uh, probably we this your wish will really come true that every person who goes to the care uh, wants to give back to the program and try to help in the mission of um, of not only TB free but also as you rightly said that TB. Uh, mission to the TB free is also very deeply connected to so many other health and development programs. And we all need to kind of, you know, move together towards ensuring um, uh, a healthy and uh, uh, sustainable future for all of us and not just a select few. So thanks a lot, Dr. Sood. If you have, do you have anything, um, uh, final thoughts to share with us before we uh, Yeah, I think uh, early detection uh, accelerating the uh, scale up of the new tools and uh, having more people friendly services will be the game changer for this next uh, this current decade i think if we are able to achieve this and uh, we are able to achieve financing for all these definitely i think we'll be in a very good position to end tb and hiv uh, whatever you have said is so so true and bang on spot and we we totally uh, res this resonates with us and i hope it does with uh, so many other people who believe in uh, health for all and all for health so thanks a lot dr sooth for talking uh, with us and i'm really sorry it took more time than i really thought but uh, you know you when you st uh, there's so much of wisdom uh, based upon your groundwork and the your, and years you have invested in strengthening improving programs on the ground in kangra all the best to your team kangra and your leadership sir and we really hope uh, to reconnect uh, after a while thank you so much again thanks a lot thank you sir